In this video, we're going to learn how to color correct and way more fun color grade iPhone ProRes log footage in Premiere Pro. Let's start with the first one, which is color correction. Color correction and color grading is often used interchangeably, even though these are two completely different processes and it's so important to understand. Color correction is a vital step that you cannot skip when you're making videos. Essentially what you're doing here is you're correcting the exposure and the colors and we're not making it look pretty, we're just making it look accurate. Now, before we get started, Started, we want to make sure that we are in the right workspace. So if you're not in the color workspace yet, go up here to workspaces and then click on color. Now this should open up the Lumetri scopes on the left and the Lumetri color panel on the right. And this is the clip that we will be working on and I'm saying we because you can actually download it in the description if you want to follow along and do this step by step to recreate the same look. My favorite way which works every single time when I'm converting Log Direct 709 is by using a plugin and this this plugin is called Cinematch. Now I use this in all of my videos because I feel like this is the most accurate way to color correct videos. So if you want to check it out, there will be a link in the description. So to use it, we're going to go and search for Cinematch and then drop it in the effect controls panel. For the source camera settings, we're going to set it to Apple and then iPhone 15 Pro and choose Apple Log, which should be there by default. We're going to ignore this part of the plugin and just scroll down and tick the box in front of Apply Rec 709 Transform. As you can see, it is really easy to convert log to rec 709. Anyone can do it. And if you have multiple log clips, you do not need to do this every single time. You can just copy the plugin and just paste it on all of the other clips. It's super easy. And like I said before, I think this is the most color accurate way of converting log to rec 709. So if you're a little bit more curious about this plugin, it is a plugin created by Film Convert, which is a company that specializes in color tools for creators and filmmakers. And what Cinematch does is it helps you color correct like we just did, but it also helps helps you color match multiple cameras if you're shooting with different cameras. How the camera sensor matching works is very interesting because they basically took a bunch of cameras with different sensors and put it in the exact identical conditions to see how each and every sensor would reproduce a certain color to then create a technology that matches all of that. So if you want to, for example, match your iPhone footage with your Sony footage, you can do that with this plugin as well. My preferred way of using this plugin is by honestly just using it to convert log to rec 709 because I find that do you want to be in the video you don't even see him do you Anyway, as I was trying to say, my preferred way of using this plugin is by converting it to Rec. 709 and then using it for color correction because it also comes with a lot of color correction controls that really helps you accurate, <laughs> accurately color correct your video. Now that we've converted this clip to Rec. 709, it is time to color correct it because as you can see, it has a bit of a green cast over it. And we can color correct it either using the tools in Cinematch or the Lumetri color panel. I personally prefer to use the controls in Cinematch because they genuinely feel more fluid. And as you can see, they're a lot more accurate. Whereas if we would go to the Lumetri color panel, we can only make adjustments in 0.1 increments, which isn't a big deal, but the controls in Cinematch definitely feel better. Before we start color correcting, let's move the Lumetri scopes to the right so we can actually see what we're doing. And a way to color correct is to use the temperature and tint slider while also reading the vector scopes. Now, if you want to learn how to read the vector scopes, I have made a video on that, which I will leave in the description because this is really important as you cannot just trust your eyes. Instead of doing this manually, we're going to be using the eyedropper tool. And since I have a lot of white in my video, I'm just going to click on something white. Now, this already looks a lot better. However, I would say it's a bit too magenta. So I'm going to slightly adjust that and then also slightly adjust the temperature while looking at the vector scopes. Now, this already looks a lot more accurate. So just keep playing around with it until you got it right. And before we move on to the color grading, let's just quickly look at the before and after because that is so satisfying. Now it is time to color grade. Color grading is the creative and personal process where you can go wild with the colors. Don't go too wild though, but you can go wild with the colors. You can manipulate it to create a certain mood or a certain aesthetic in your video. And this part is completely optional. You can do it if you want, but you can also skip it. However, you cannot skip 
color correction. There's a few ways that you can color grade your footage. You can either do this manually using all the controls in the Lumetri color panel, which is something that I do as well. And I've made multiple videos about this if you wanna check that out after watching this video. But you could also do something that is way easier and it really helps you achieve a certain look, which is what I've done in this video. And that is using a LUT. Now, if you don't know what a LUT is, LUT is basically a video filter, just like you have photo filters to give your photos a certain look. You also have video filters to give your videos a certain look. So in order to do this, we're gonna go to the creative tab and then we're going to import a look, which is a LUT. Now these are all of my LUTs, so I'm going to pick this LUT because I think that it really complements the colors in this video well. Now LUTs are in some sort of magic where you can change a color to a completely different color and make it look amazing. You do wanna look at what colors am I working with and what LUT will complement those colors in my opinion. Now I have to admit, this looks really trash. I feel like the background looks pretty good, but the blacks are completely crushed. So let's fix that. Now with any other LUT, you wanna lower the intensity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at zero, and we're going to slowly start adding the LUT until we're happy with the look. Now, I think about here looks great, but the black still look a little bit crushed. So we're going to go to the basic correction tab and lift the shadows to get that detail back in my code. Now we don't wanna to add too much though, cause as you can see that brightens the entire image, which we can then in turn fix, but we're going to stick to around 28.9. Then I'm going to lower the highlights just a little bit, but as you can see, not too much. And this already looks a lot better. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna start messing around with the curves. However, what I have noticed is that when I do this within the same effect to which I applied the LUTs, the image will turn really flat. So instead of doing that, I'm going to add a new Lumetri color effect. And we can do that by going up here and then click on add Lumetri color effect. Then we're gonna go down to the curves and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still lift the shadows ever so slightly and we're gonna bring the midpoint down again because I do not wanna affect the midpoints. I just wanna lift the shadows. Then I actually wanna bring the blues that we so nicely saw when we applied the effect back to the windows and we can do that by using the hue versus saturation curve or just increasing the intensity of the LUT. So let's go back to the first Lumetri effect to which we added our LUT and increase that intensity. Now, as you can see, it is also lowering our shadows again. So now we're gonna go back to the other effect and we're going to lift the shadows a bit. Honestly, I think it will look even better if we increase the blues even more and make them pop more, but we do not wanna add more of this LUT. So let's go to the hue and saturation and saturate the blues a bit more. Now, if you wanna learn more about these curves and how to use them, I actually made a video about it. So I'll leave that in the description below. For now, we will just create two points on the line to isolate the blues and then lift it a little bit. Then if you wanna change the color of the blue a little bit, maybe add a little bit more teal or maybe make it a little bit more magenta, whatever you like, you can use the hue versus hue curve. But in this case, we're just gonna skip that one. One thing that I do wanna do though, in very simple terms, I wanna make the blues a bit darker. So on the hue versus luma curve, we can actually do this the same way we did it before, isolate the blues and then lower the exposure a little bit. Personally, I believe less is more, so we don't wanna go too wild with this color grade, but of course, if you want, you can, you can just mess around with all the colors but I personally really like subtleness. I think this looks pretty good, but I'm not too happy with the way that I am lit. Now the background is very bright and then I look very dark. So I kind of want to manipulate that for as much as we can. And for that, we're going to go to the HSL secondary tab. Now in this tab, we're going to click on the reds to isolate the reds, which in this case is my skin tone. And we can see that by clicking on the box in front of color and gray. And then we're going to denoise it and blur it. And honestly, these values are quite random. We just want it to blur in a bit nicely. Let's uncheck that box really quickly so we can see the full image. And the one thing that I wanna do is just very slightly change the temperature so I don't look too orange, which I don't think was the case, but I like it better this way. And then we're gonna click on these three circles. And what we wanna do is we wanna change the midtones and the shadows. So let's start with the shadows and up that a little bit. As you can see, it's only affecting my face and my hair. So we're gonna do the same with the midtones, just to light it up ever so slightly. And if you think this is too much, then you can lower it again. Honestly, when it comes to color grading, it's just going back and forth and really finessing the look until you're happy with the way that it looks. Now this LUT is one of the 12 LUTs that I've created that will not mess with your skin tones because oh my God, that is my, my biggest frustration when I'm using LUTs is that it turns me into an Oompa Loompa and makes the footage basically unusable. So that is what I try to avoid with all of these LUTs. And these LUTs can be applied to all kinds of footage, whether you're shooting with your iPhone and you're shooting in Apple ProRes log footage, as you just saw, it works on that, it works on Sony, it works on Panasonic, it works on Fujifilm. I've tried it all out and it works on all of those. So there will also be a link in the description with a little discount code if you wanna go ahead and grab the LUTs and use them for 
yourself. If you want to learn how to color grade manually, which I highly recommend because then you really start to understand color grading, go watch this video right here where we dive into the topic and I'll show you how to create this very filmic look using nothing but controls. But if you want to save some time, go to the description box, check out Cinematch and check out my love pack and I hope you get to see you in the next video.